So we have our beautiful C program. We compile it and we run it and everything works. Now, if we check what is going on underneath the hood with an object dump, we are going to get the actual machine code, which is just a stream of bytes at the end of the day, because your computer only wants binary, doesn't understand at all the symbols we are writing. And this video, I want to explore a little what is going on when a CPU is running a program, namely the fetching, the coding and executing of the instructions. Now, here we have my simple CPU 32 bits model. You can see the registers, the ALU, which is just a calculator, and some control unit registers. The most important being the instruction pointer, namely the register that points to the next instruction to execute. Here you can see the RAM, which is just a memory, and as you already saw, the text or code segment in which we have instructions. And this is just the process memory layout namely every time you run a program the operating system is gonna give the process an actual space in memory which is this one of course this is a very simplified version we don't have the heap we don't have the data segment whatever now we want to focus only on the code segments so here you can see the actual stream of bytes right now i grouped into chunks to make the thing simpler but you have to assume that the CPU only sees a train of bytes, nothing more. The first chunk of bytes is this one, B8FFFFF7F. So in the first phase, the CPU is gonna fetch the actual instruction. What does it mean? The instruction is gonna be brought inside the instruction register. So we have a move of data from memory to the CPU. This is what is going on. Now, you may have noticed that these instructions have a variable length. And indeed, in x86 architecture, we have instructions with a variable length, up to 15 bytes. So it's a very wide spectrum. This doesn't happen, for example, with a Spark architecture, in which we have instructions all of the same length. x86 indeed is a complex instruction set architecture and one of the aspects of a complex architecture is that we have a variable length instruction set so now the simple copy the simple move that i made you have to assume that is more refined what is going on underneath the hood is that the cpu has to understand the length of the actual instruction and this is a level of refinement that now we are not gonna get into it because we just want to understand very superficially what is going on. Assume that what is going on is very simply that the CPU is bringing this instruction inside the instruction register, period. As simple as that. So data movement. Now we get into the other phase, which is the decoding. Namely, the CPU has to understand what the heck is written in those bytes, right? I have B8FFFFFF7F. How to do that? Well, let's assume we are the CPU. The first thing we shall do is to check this B8, which is an opcode, an operation code. This number is telling us exactly what to do with the following bytes. So we go in an x86 table, we search for B8, and we find out essentially that the instructions ranging from B0, allegedly, to b F are move instructions. In our specific case, we have B8, which is an instruction able to move an immediate 16, 32 bits into a register. Now, why B8? The notation B8R refers to a family of move instructions used to move immediate values directly into registers. Specifically, B8 is the opcode for moving an immediate value into EAX register. The plus error part indicates that this opcode can be modified by adding a small value to it to target other registers in instead of EAX. For example, B8 targets EAX, B9 would target ECX. So we understand the tricks, right? B8 is going to be the register A, B9 uh, the register C. For a specific encoding, we have a specific register. So here B8, I understand move into EAX. And then I have the actual data, FFFFF7F. So given that this is written in a little Andean fashion, namely we stumble upon the least significant byte firsthand, the value is 7F, FF, 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 which is maxint, right? Okay, as a CPU, we managed to decode the actual instruction 
into something that we can understand. So now the following thing is just to do that. So we have to put this value into the register EAX, which is this one. So this basically is the execute phase. We put this value inside the register. Of course, you have to assume that what is really going on is flipping those bits to represent this value. And the hexadecimal notation is particularly handy to visualize those bits. Basically, they are all turned on, but the most significant one, right? Because the seven is a zero, one, one, one. All the other bits are all turned on. All right, we managed to do the first instruction then what is going to happen of course the instruction pointer is going to move to the following instruction like that and then we do exactly the same thing so we have to fetch again the instruction exactly like before so we're gonna bring the instruction inside the instruction register and then again we have to understand what the heck to do so 83 so we search for 83, of course, in hexadecimals. It is not the value 83, the decimal 83. And we find out that this is an add operation. Of course, the real CPU doesn't search for entries inside the table. Everything is hardware implemented. The chips are arranged in such a way that with this opcode, we get an addition. So we have 83, which is an add. Then we have C001. Now, this c0 my friend is another specific encoding that is telling me that you want to add in the a register how do i understand that well this is kind of subtle but to make it simple i have these eight bits two hexadecimal symbols they are telling me exactly what to do in our case we have c0 so one one and everything is zero right so the mode is one one so we have a register addressing mode and the following are all zeros so i know that register is going to be register a now this is very superficially what is going on because i don't want to go technical i leave you a link in the description if you want to dig down on major details long story short as you can see everything is just code everything is telling me something 83 opcode it means add cool c0 this is an addressing mode it's telling me exactly what we are talking about and then we have 0, 01, which is exactly the value. So add in register A the value 1. You see how I decoded these actual bytes. So what do I do? I go here in register EAX and I add 1. Well, we get an overflow, right? We get 80, 00, 00, 00, 00. Like that. So again, we managed to decode this instruction. Then again, I have as a byproduct an increase, an increase that pay attention is the same size as the bytes of the actual instruction length, otherwise everything would not work. The instruction is exactly the same, right? So we bring here inside, we do the same thing, and here we get a plus one, like that. All right, so we can go on and on. You understood very superficially what is going on with the fetch the code execute phase. Now let me show you something. I found online this beautiful visualator, which is essentially like my CPU, but more dynamic, better. You can see the registers, the flags. Here you can have the carry flag, which is gonna turn on if the result of an add or shift operation carries out a bit beyond the destination operand. That important is the overflow flag, which is gonna be set if the result is too large to fit in the destination operand. You can see the opcode, which is exactly the one I use in my little demo which at the end of the day is just one train of bytes let me repeat to you every process boils down to this train of bytes namely bits here you can see the actual code all right if we run the first instruction b8 ff 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 like you saw in my demo the register eax is gonna change its own state right it's gonna become max int then we have an add eax one namely AC3, C0, 01, boom. And we get an overflow, right? We get an overflow and the actual flags are gonna be turned on, as you noticed, right? So we have that's an operation as a side effect on the actual flags. And this is very important when we want to do jumps. Then again, we're gonna add one to the register A. So very simply in the least significant byte of a we have an increase by one then we have b302 so we're gonna move two in register b boom 
that's what is going on pay attention that every time the instruction pointer is changing its value then we have fe cb which is a decrement bl so pay attention to these two instructions and the relative flags so i run the first time minus one and i run again minus one boom and you can see that the zero flag has turned on an operation as a side effect on the actual flags i leave a link in the description about this tool which is pretty handy to understand really what is going on watch carefully what is going on with the cpu with every instruction how the flags are responding depending the actual operation and this is very very useful to understand what is going on underneath the hood inside your cpu